I feel like I can't incorporate things. Ah, oh no. Okay, man overboard. For years, we've tweaked conventional stir-fry recipes to achieve delicious results in a nonstick skillet instead of a wok, the traditional cooking vessel. Since American stove burners are typically flat, we aim to get more contact with the burner by using the broader cooking surface of a 12-inch skillet instead of the smaller cooking surface of a wok. But recently, we took another look at woks, and we put them through our rigorous review process. We had some interesting findings, and I personally bought our winning wok even before I was finished testing. Lisa and I are going to cook the same Cook's Country beef and broccoli stir-fry in a wok and a skillet, so you can see if the wok life is right for you, or if you'd be better off with a regular old skillet. First off, Hannah's going to show us the skillet. All right, so the oil is in the pan, but before I even turn this pan on, I want to talk a little bit about cooking safely in nonstick. Traditional nonstick skillets like this one, they basically have a coating of plastic across the top of it. And if they're heated too hot, the plastic can start to break down and it can release dangerous fumes. One way to make sure you're not cooking in too high of a heat is to use oil in the pan, never heat it empty. Smoking point of vegetable oil is roughly 400 degrees and these pans can start off-gassing at 500 degrees. So if you see your oil smoking, you know the pan is getting too hot. And that is a big difference between a nonstick skillet and a wok. They can get super, super hot and they're still safe. They're not gonna off-gas. That's definitely a pro for woks. You have to be a little more cautious here and you do not wanna get these nonstick skillets quite as hot. We tested 10 12-inch nonstick skillets priced from about $30 all the way up to $200. We rated them on nonstick ability, capacity, ease of use, and durability. This is our winner by OXO, which is actually on the lower end of the price range for this testing. All right, so let's get going here. We are gonna put the burner on to medium. Once it is heated up, we're gonna put the beef in and brown it a little bit. Two minutes on each side. All right, so my oil is smoking here. I'm gonna add my beef. Spread it out nice and thin. One reason this pan won our testing, we looked at all different things, and one of them was capacity. This has such a nice broad surface area, so you can brown more efficiently. Things aren't crowded, they're not steaming, you're not getting like gray beef. Also had a really nice shape. You can get in there, scoop around, you can toss. We also looked at durability. We do this egg test where we cook 50 eggs with no fat when the pan's brand new, one after another to check how it releases. This is a major industry test. Then at the end of testing, we cook another 50 eggs right in a row to see how the pan releases at the end of testing. And this pan was super durable, which is great. But I will say, non-stick skillets are not infallible. This is, like I said, a plastic coating on here. It's gonna wear off. I think the Cookware Association estimates like two to three years is the lifespan of a nonstick pan if you're using it regularly. So you do have to be careful with these. I grabbed these tongs that are coated um, in silicone so I didn't scratch up the surface with a metal spatula, for example. Honestly, I kind of hate that. I don't like being careful when I'm cooking. So for me, that's definitely a downside to nonstick. I don't want to have to baby my pans. I want to be able to bang things around. So the skillet here has a much broader cooking surface than the wok does. This is just under 10 inches compared to the wok, seven inches. So if you have a less powerful stove, if you're working on a glass top electric stove or an induction stove, it's gonna be really hard to get the wok hot enough to stir fry successfully. So we do recommend sticking with a nonstick skillet if you've got a less powerful stove. All right, so our beef is all browned. Now I'm gonna add this delicious smelling scallion, ginger, garlic, oyster sauce mixture. Stir this around. So this pan, it's nice and to maneuver in when compared to other nonstick skillets. It was definitely the best of the bunch on that front. That said, I am still being pretty careful here. You know, I'm carefully stirring around because I really don't want to lose any of this beef over the side. All right, I'm gonna add my broccoli in here. Now I really have to be cautious and I need to make sure see i'm getting a little close to the edge there it's a little nerve-wracking i feel like i can't incorporate things ah oh no okay man overboard i can't incorporate things as quickly and efficiently as i want to because i really am being careful because of these lower sides so definitely a pro for the walk there this nonstick surface it is plastic it 
is the fond is sticking to the food and not to the pan. One factor to consider with a nonstick skillet is that you don't have to worry about upkeep and maintenance like you do with carbon steel, with cast iron. Um, the nonstick pans, you don't have to oil them after use. Uh, so there is definitely a pro there. They are no maintenance, easier to use on that front. All right, so we've got a cover on here for three minutes. We're gonna wait till the broccoli uh, gets nice and crisp tender. Throughout these few minutes, you wanna do a little shaky shaky to make sure things are evenly distributed. This handle, you know, it's super comfortable. Um, it's nice and ergonomic. It has good affordance, which means, you know, it doesn't force your hand into a certain uh, formation with weird bumps or anything. It's nice, a lot of grip options. It's gently brushed steel, so it's not slippery. Uh, great handle, that's for sure. This OXO pan was also the lightest that we tested as far as nonstick skillets, um, which can be a huge plus. You know, you can pick it up, it's easier to clean. Carbon steel walks, carbon steel in general, cast iron in general, they're definitely gonna be heavier. It's all done now. Take it off. We're gonna stir in our scallions here. The green part of the scallions, we used the white part earlier. Stir this in. And now this is ready to serve. All right, so I have some of the stir fry here. I'm gonna try it out. Mmm. So good. This is absolutely delicious. You know, but the question is, how does this compare to the stir fry in a wok? Let's go to Lisa with our winning wok. So I'm here to talk about woks. You know, these are really wonderful cooking vessels that we hadn't really used in the test kitchen. We were focused on letting people use a pan that they may already have for other purposes, like a nonstick skillet. But we always question our assumptions and we wanted to look into woks a little bit more. You know, one of the really interesting things about woks, you know, they have this bowl shape and traditional woks are completely round at the bottom. This is a flat bottom wok. It has a flat surface on the bottom. Traditionally, what they did in China, they had these ovens that were built with a hole in them and the wok dropped into the hole and you built the fire underneath and that bowl shape allows you to put ingredients in and, and move them around and cook on the sides as well as the bottom. The cooking goes very, very quickly. That's one of the things about it. It's very hot, it's intense, it sears the exterior and gives it lovely flavor. Um, a really well-seasoned, older wok, people say that it gives it the breath of the wok, the flavor of the wok, and that's really treasured if you eat a fresh hot stir fry, it has this extra flavor because that high heat and the oil and the searing is so delicious. So I was pretty excited about this and I really wanted to learn more. I went and asked people who are experts in wok cooking, including Grace Young, who's won James Beard Award and IACP awards for her writing and for her cooking. Her family's wok is actually going to be put in the Smithsonian as an artifact of Chinese American culinary history, which is incredible. I also spoke with Tane Chan, who's the owner of the wok shop in San Francisco's Chinatown. This is a real institution. She is a font of all knowledge. And both of them told me a few things to look for, because when you go wok shopping, they're at every possible price, all kinds of materials and shapes, and they all say they have different advantages. Both of them were really adamant. They said the only materials you want to look at is carbon steel, and lightweight cast iron. Those are the most authentic materials for a wok. They said look at 14 inches woks, which are 14 inches across the diameter of the rim. Anything smaller is just gonna pile up and steam your food. They make bigger ones, but those are for restaurant kitchens. They also said get a flat bottom wok. You don't really want one that's round bottom for a typical American stove. And then you don't need a wok ring, which also, you've seen those rings that the wok sits on. It holds it up off the heat and it doesn't really let the heat come up in the right way. So they said if you get a flat bottom wok, you're good to go. I chose nine woks. They're all priced between about $33 and $55. You can spend hundreds of dollars, but they said don't. Lightweight cast iron ones, they held on to heat a little too long, took a little longer to heat up in the first place. Unanimously, people preferred the really lightweight carbon steel. One of the things that you have to know though about carbon steel is that you have to season it. It's just like a carbon steel skillet. The metal is raw and unfinished for the most part, and if it's exposed to water or air, it will rust. So it's sent in a coating of a thick grease or wax that you need to scrub off first. Do your best, it doesn't have to be perfect, it will come off in time. And then you're gonna cook in it 
some food just to start the process of seasoning it. This one, our winner, is by Taylor and Eng, and it's, it's pre-treated in the factory with a high heat process that actually turns it this gorgeous blue-gray color. The pre-treatment gives it a little bit of a leg up on seasoning. It's eventually gonna turn completely black inside. I've had mine for several months, and this is a process. It's gonna turn a little blotchy and brown. It might get a little better and worse. It might stick in the beginning, but as you keep using it, it eventually becomes beautiful, black, non-stick. It's great. The process is pretty simple. You're just gonna take some oil, salt, and potato peels and stir them around on medium-high heat. Move it around the pan, get that oil to splatter, get the, the salt kind of scrubs off the rest of that um, shipping grease. The oil starts to sort of settle in and polymerize. The peels are there to give you something to look at and to gauge how, you know, when they're really dark brown and almost burned, Take the whole thing off, throw all that stuff away, rinse it with water, pat it dry, and you're good to go. You can start cooking. It doesn't mean you're completely done with seasoning. That's gonna happen over time. This is just a process. Just keep cooking. It's gonna get more and more nonstick. It's gonna be easier and easier to use. And you, as, as Grace puts it, you kind of bond with your wok. And you know, if you develop this relationship where you're, you're taking care of it, it's taking care of you. Yeah, I had different testers who have different experience with woks and heights and strengths and skills. We all got to handle the woks and give lots of feedback. Um, and everyone really loved this one because it's lightweight, because you don't need a pot holder most of the time because it's got a wooden handle because it's just very easy to handle and to see what you're doing. And it became a little bit more nonstick, a little faster than some of the other ones. I'm cooking on a little standalone gas burner here just because my stove is up against the wall and it's kind of hard to see what's going on. So I'm gonna turn this on and it happens very quickly. It gets very hot. Uh, this is a really thin carbon steel. Carbon steel is great at transmitting heat. It's very efficient. It cools down fairly quickly too, which is nice. Grace taught me a trick that you can, if your wok is dry, you can flick a little bit of water in there and you can see exactly where the heat is. Um, I can see that the sides of my wok are not quite as hot yet, but the bottom is good and hot. Don't just pour the oil in the bottom, run it down the sides around the wok. And that just lets it heat up and cover the whole wok, which is really nice. It's already smoking as you can see. So this is hot. I'm just moving the oil around to get it on the sides. Turning down my heat a teensy bit, cause my goodness. And now I'm adding that beef. So I'm spreading the beef out so that it really gets lots of contact with the bottom and sides of the wok. I wish you could smell it, it smells so good. <laughs> I have a mixture of scallions and ginger and garlic. I'm going to add this in. These are our aromatics. We don't want to put those in first because they'll just burn. You really want to get the beef cooking. Chicken broth, soy sauce, more oyster sauce. That's going in. And now all my broccoli. And stir that in and then I'm going to cover it and use that natural moisture to steam my broccoli. Now the thing you need to know about getting a cover for your wok, they don't fit on top of the pan, pan rim to rim like on western style pans. It's about two inches in diameter smaller than the wok. So this is a 12 inch lid in a 14 inch wok. And that lid is really handy, especially if you want to make popcorn or to steam any kind of vegetables in the process of cooking. So the broccoli has been steaming in there with the beef and all those flavors are coming together under this domed lid. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. I'm gonna give it a good stir. In a 12 inch skillet, I do have to worry that this is too much food and that it's gonna fall out, but I've got plenty of space here. I've got a couple inches of extra walls and uh, I can toss this stuff around and move it as I need to to get the nice browning and um, distribute that sauce and that flavor. So I love the fact that this is 
a surface that's going to keep getting better with time rather than degrading the way nonstick would. Um, this is done. Look at this. And here I am, a weakling, able to lift it with a single hand. <laughs> Let me take a little bit and see how it is. Looks amazing. I'm going to run off with this bowl of food because it's super good. It's just flavorful. It's the meat is beautifully seasoned. It's moist. It's a little crispy around the edges, but nice in the middle. Uh, the broccoli is perfectly crisp, tender, bright green, kept that color. And it's, it's a wonderful, easy dish to put together in a few minutes. This is just a great pan. It's relatively inexpensive and um, it's gonna be something I can hand down to my kids. So as we learned, you know, woks have some distinct advantages in the sense that they are a big sort of shell-shaped vessel that you can put a lot of food in at once and move it around and it gets lots of heat contact. You have the sides as well as the bottom which offer different heat zones. Um, woks are great and we, we found one that we really love. If you have a gas stove or a coil electric stove that provides plenty of heat output, a wok can be terrific. All right, so if you can tell, Lisa completely fell in love with woks during her testing, and I think um, we all did a little bit. Nonstick skillets, they have some pros too. Um, they're lighter, they're no maintenance, there is a broader cooking surface there. And if you have a glass top electric stove or an induction stove, the wok's not gonna work that well on them. So a nonstick skillet is probably a better choice there, but you really can't go wrong with either of these pans and we truly loved the woks. For more information on all the equipment we just talked about, check out americastestkitchen.com and for the winning products, see the links below. Leave us your wok and skillet questions in the comments and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.